Right folks, I'm going to show you once again, I've made a pretty stupid mistake. You'll see, I've done something really stupid with a sledgehammer. <laughs> and uh, these, some of these parts are not replaceable, this is 60 years old. So join me on this adventure, dismantling the brake, and see how I might well have completely written this thing off. I set out to free the brake, and obviously this wasn't going to work. It very quickly descended into dismantling the brake, as you can see here. So first the torque measuring assembly comes off, and I have a little go at this bearing. Easily accessible. I'm just going to strip this thing in an order I can do it basically. It's a split ball bearing. There's a bearing outer race there, which is split into two shells, a bit like an engine main bearing. And then all the ball races are here. There's a slit there, look. So this cage is in two halves. So it seems like this thing was assembled on the shaft. There we go. Quite cool though. Made by Cooper. Right, back to that torque measuring assembly that you had. That went onto a spring and then measured deflection on the spring, so I'm going to change all that. So, I'm going to resort to my old friend the welder, which is very good at getting bolts out. I'm going to weld that on there, apply a great deal of heat to it, and see if I can get it to move. Oh yeah, baby! So I'd attempted to get the nuts off the far side of that assembly, but it didn't work out, so I started then to go for the bolts you just saw me remove. I've welded a bolt on this time, now it's getting a bit looser. Here's the second one. <laughs> I woke up this morning quite worried actually. And I've been hitting this with a sledgehammer in that direction. So I've been hitting it like that, but with this hammer pretty damn hard to try and get it off this component and failed. But I hit it hard enough to bend the piece of steel. Here it is, look, you can see I've bent the edge up that was on there I've since cut it off and that's that's unimportant it's given me more rotation which has given me more options to get this off but I was hitting the crap out of that so I thought actually I better check it if that's bent if that's bent I'm absolutely done for there's no way I could straighten this so I better check it there it goes Oh my god, that is so flipping lucky. That is so lucky I could have written this thing off. I can't do a little bit more thinking before I do such a lot of hammering. Man, I'm so relieved. <laughs> that was such that was playing on my mind this morning. I'm trying to get this cap off here. And this you can see it only needs to go up by less than 10 mil before I can get that off because it's trapped against the frame of the um, the rolling road you see. So what I'm going to do is loosen these two caps next and I'm going to loosen these two as well and just lift that up a fraction therefore I can get that off. <laughs> Not a chance, no. Here it comes the trusty two-ton crane. I'm really glad I got this. I'm never, never going to need a two-ton capacity. It has such a lot of extra reach on it, uh, which has been useful lots of times. So that comes the back of it. You can see it now, a close-up view, nice and clear, and I can get that end cap off. And that was reasonably straightforward. Okay, it's off. So, kind of explains with the way it locates very strongly on this uh, edge, which is a quite a tight fit. Not interference, but a good fit. That explains why it can get away with these tiny, tiny bolts. So that is just an end cap. I'm hoping I can take this bearing apart in here. You're discovering this with me. I can see, look up in this edge here, there's an internal thread look. So I suppose that explains these hammer marks. Oh yeah, look at that! 
Now you can see I've got that all the way to the end of the shaft. I can't really get it much further, look, because we're hitting there. It's time to lift the whole thing up so that I can get that completely off. Now this took quite a lot of work to get it off. I had to sort of support one side of it while hitting the other. So I could sort of offer the first hammer in and then hammer with the other hammer. And that gave a fairly uniform pull. And eventually it came off. This looks good. Nothing untoward here. The bearings have no water in them, which is fantastic. Uh, and I can now get access to these much better access to these four large bolts. I can try welding. Uh, failing that, I can just cut them off. These all came off reasonably well, actually. It was just a nut and a bolt arrangement. It wasn't into a threaded hole or anything. Uh, three of the four came off. So we've seen three of these come off with this incredible 850 newton meter impact. I was squinting, doing a safety squint because these are normal sockets and I'm a bit scared. Um, I'm amazed that it came out. It's a shame the last one didn't but uh, one to go. I'm going to have to do it with welding. This is where it's so well, this welding trick me, because it heats the bolt up. But on this occasion, I actually welded the bolt to the disc. <laughs> so I've actually welded the entire assembly to the disc. But you see those three bolts are all out, but that one not. So uh, I have managed to get the nut off the back side. So if the bolt isn't too seized in the assembly, then this disc should come off now. And so this is the real crux of it now. You can see the coils are free now once that disc come off, comes off and the eight coils can come up as well. So that's uh, that's really quite a big moment, getting this break apart. There was still one fairly hefty job to do. While that internal disc is free, it won't come off past the hub. So there's eight bolts to get that hub off, which is which was a, a real nightmare job. You know? But look at this thing, what a great moment to have this free. Very flipping heavy, that thing. Must be 100 kilos. As you can see, I could just lift it, but just <laughs> there's nowhere to pick it up off the floor Jeez, anymore. No way. So now I'm onto those eight bolts which are threaded into the hub. And they were a nightmare to get off. And so after spending an entire morning getting eight bolts out, I think I've got the last one moving. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder why I do these things. Now I thought this whole end would come off the shaft, but it's just a little hub device on the shaft. And then the disc can come off. I've done it, I've dismantled the brake. I've disconnected all of the coils and I've tested them all for continuity. Uh, they all have continuity. And I've tested them for continuity against the body as well. And that's where the bad news starts. So I'm going to have to take it apart, and because this uh, huge stainless steel plate is here, I'm going to have to take every single one of these caps off. I'm going to drill these bits out where they've um, hammered the material into the screw end to stop it coming out, and then I'm going to use my welder to get all of these screws out, move these plates, or these uh, shoes I think they're called, and then this covering plate, and then I can get in and see what's left, how much good insulation there is, or this cover at least I'm hoping I might be able to use, and, uh, and see what it looks like inside, the size of the coils and the number of turns, etc. Yes, go from there. That is a Very difficult this. I want to, well, the easy thing to do would be a copy, the number of turns and the thickness of the wire, and then I've got to figure out how to insulate it. But what I'd like to do is tailor it so it's a bit more like uh, the brake controller, a bit better suited to the brake controller I want to buy. So hopefully I can get a bit more torque out of it. Um, oh, but nice. that is very complicated, and I'm trying to understand. I get the resistivity equation, I used to teach physics and that, but how. It's complicated. I can put thinner wire in, do more turns, but what's the result of that? I don't, I don't know. I've got, to, I've got to get to the bottom of it. Ah! God damn it! Five of them came out, two of them snapped off, and one of them just wasn't attached at all. Apparently it's got corrosion right under the head of the bolt. I got them guys, all eight are off. They've got this insulation material here which is probably asbestos based I don't know yet and then I presume there's a layer on the on the iron and then there's the sleeve over the outside which I've managed to preserve so I'm finally getting an idea of what I can do now at least as a minimum I can put it back together with fresh copper as it should be 
but I would like to up the resistance yeah uh, and increase the voltage to 96 I think so next thing I'm going to try and unwind one of them man this is a hell of a process <laughs> 